ஓகே மேம் ஸ்டார்ட் பண்ணலாம் in the name of allah the most gracious and most merciful i deem it a great privilege and honor to welcome mrs satya banzal for the second day of the international workshop for the students on the topic memory techniques i welcome all the students and the staff of our college for this second day uh, international workshop and also my technical supporters ms bhuma and mrs mumtaz begum to this webinar uh, thank you and i welcome once again all of you <coughs> over to mrs atiya bandu bismillahir rahmanir rahim alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin ar rahmanir rahim malik yawmiddin iyyaka na'budu wa iyyaka nasta'in ihdinas siratal mustaqim siratal ladina an'amta alayhim ghairil maghdubi alayhim டாக்டர் the technical support and the student who proposed vote of thanks yesterday and all participants participants you are the most important part of this whole thing if you are not there this webinar is not going to take place so my heartfelt thanks to you and i hope we will do as well as we did yesterday inshallah so we begin Once again it is our teaching and learning enhancement project of Aleph Academy and today we are taking uh memory forgetting and memory techniques so outline will be something like this we'll talk about background information about how memories are created and how forgetting takes place and then we'll talk about how fast we forget and we'll talk about RIA memory formula and then we'll also talk about the main part which is memory techniques <clears throat> inshallah i hope to take at least 9 to 10 memory techniques and if time permits we can take the 11th one also yesterday we went through no taking strategies so this is my request to all of you please uh please fetch a paper and a pencil or a pen for writing a ruler and two or three different color pens or pencils a marker whatever you need by now you know what is needed for you to make notes and then please take notes as you have learned yesterday as we go along through this workshop i have one question i am unable to see the bar can you see me dr rajab fatima yes ma'am yes ma'am i can see you ma'am but i don't know i'm not getting any of that so as long as if you stop seeing me please let me know okay so i'll know what to do <clears throat> so inshallah we begin we begin with background information about memory and forgetting so what are memories i want you to give me some answer what do you think are memories and dr bhuma please let me know what the answers are okay ma'am what what do you understand by memories any answer yet no ma'am no no answer yet i posted no the question what are memories what do we understand by memory what is memory what 
What do we understand by memory? No answer? No, ma'am. <laughs> okay, never mind, never mind. We'll go through it. So memories are a record of something we have experienced in life, either by seeing it. Uh, uh, they say it is storage of information. Okay, storage of information. Okay, thank you for being so nice and so fast. Thank you so much. So memories are a record of something we have experienced in life by seeing it, by smelling it, by touching it, by hearing it, or by tasting it. That means memories are created using information that we receive from our sense organs. That is another, eyes. Uh, another one says use, uh, used to store, store. Used to store, okay. Very good, at least you are thinking. That's a great sign. That's a great sign, really. Thank you so much. Now, why do we need memories? So memories help us in so many ways. They save our life. If you see a tiger coming, you know you have to save your life. So memories help us save our life. They help us not to make the same mistake again and again and suffer. We learn from our uh, memories. So we learn from our mistakes. And then we feel the joy that we have experienced in the past. So remember what uh, on your birthday, your father gave you something, you were so happy, or your mom told you a story and you were so happy. We, because of those memories, we can still feel the joy when we think about those memories. Or we become angry because something bad had happened to us in the past and we learn from it. And we think again about what wrong someone had done to us. And then because we remember somebody had done something wrong to us, we have two choices. We can either decide to forgive the perpetrator or we decide to take revenge. So if we try to be good human beings, we'll come in the first category, we'll try to forgive. We can acquire and transmit knowledge. The first answer that some student had given, the storage of information. So we store that information and convert it into knowledge. And we make sense of the world, otherwise we would not know what is happening in the world, how, where I am going, which road I have to take, should I walk on the left side of the road or the right side of the road? All that is possible because I have memories and we learn new information and so on. It goes on and on and on. If memories cannot be created, stored or retrieved, life would become extremely difficult. Okay, so we all agree. If memories cannot be created, stored or retrieved, retrieved means bring it back from the storage. Life would become extremely difficult. So let's see, to understand what memories are, this is the mind. And we use this three box model. Though all three box look the same size, but they are not really same size as we'll see very soon. And actually there is no physical box. It is just a concept to understand how memories are created and retrieved. There is no box inside our brains, inside our skull. So our sense organs, they continuously retrieve information from the world all around us. But everything we see or hear, everything we see or hear, or taste or touch or smell is not stored forever in our memory. Only when we pay attention, you see this word attention? The memory, information is coming all the time. Even if you are walking on the road, you are not paying attention, you are seeing there are hundreds of trees, there are birds, there are cars, all that information is coming. But all of this will not be stored in your memory forever. Only when you start paying attention to it, this will be sent to short-term storage, that is short-term memory. And how do we pay attention? We pay attention by seeing it, hearing it, smelling it, tasting it, touching it, then only the process of memory starts, creation of memory starts. Simply information coming will not be turned into memory unless we pay attention. So this is a crucial word here. Paying attention means 
what? It means you focus on that thing, whatever you are seeing, experiencing, you think about it, or you recite, you speak about it, or you recall, you try to remember, or you repeat, or you write about it. So these are all cues to tell your mind, tell your brain that this particular item of memory is important for me. That is what we mean by paying attention. Now, when all this attention comes, the brain, this is a biological process by which brain encodes that memory. Encoding is a biological process. Through, so brain encodes that memory and sends it to the short-term memory for storage for a very short time. And then if you still continue paying attention, how do you pay attention now? You can pay attention by revising, recalling, rehearsing. So this memory will again, the brain will encode it, which is a biological process and send it to the long-term memory box. So memory, whatever we were seeing here, it will go to sensory memory first. Then if we continue, pay, continue to pay attention, it will go to short-term memory. If we still continue paying attention to that memory, it will go into long-term memory. But at every stage, we have this problem. If we stop paying attention, memory will be lost. Okay, any question? Any question? No, ma'am, so, so far no questions. Okay, so let us talk about each memory separately. Sensory memory, sensory memory is very detailed but we lose it within seconds, very fast we lose it. If we pay attention to it within those few seconds, then only it is sent for storage as short-term memory. And we cannot use this memory because we lose it almost immediately. Now, I'll give you an example. If you are walking in a crowded market, suddenly you pass by some woman and you look at her you don't recognize some woman passed by, you were you are walking in the opposite direction. She is going in the opposite direction. After going a couple of steps, you remember, oh, that was my neighbor when I was 10 years old. So you turn back. That is sensory memory. If in those two steps, you do not remember who she was, you don't pay attention, you will not remember. It will be gone. That is sensory memory. And we cannot use it because we lose it so fast. Short-term memory, the problem with short-term memory is it has a very limited capacity. Some experts say it can uh, store only five to nine items of memories for a short while. If we continue paying attention within that short while, it is sent to the long-term storage here. So short-term memories are disorganized. Two problems, limited capacity and they are disorganized but we can still use them. This is why it is called working memory. If you remember, if going for the exam, just before walking into the exam hall, you were reading something and when you open your question paper, the answer is, the question is the same for which you have to write the answer what you have read just few minutes before. Now, you may not remember what you are writing, but when you get your exam papers back, you realize that what you have written was correct and you have gotten marks for that. That is a short-term memory. That's why it is called working memory. It's not mm, like long-term memory. You may or may not understand it. You may or not, may not remember it, but it works. It has two problems. It has limited capacity and it is disorganized. Now, long-term memory is... It's a huge storage space. All of us who have lived so many years, 50 plus years, 60 plus years. So we have lots of memories. And if we live another 30 years, we'll again collect memories. There is no shortage of space for long-term memory. And here the memories are well organized like the books in a library. So what happens is 
when you want something from the long-term memory, you can bring it back. Now, learning requires creating long-term memories. Now, some long-term memories come to our mind on their own. Suddenly you may remember, oh, what happened? You know, one day I was sitting with my mom, my mom told me this story and I laughed. So happy memory, suddenly you come back. But when we are taking exams or revising for exams, we actually try to recall it consciously. You remember yesterday when we talked about um, how to learn using those corner notes, how to learn. I said, you cover the notes, use your question column and try to remember from, uh, try to recall what you have written down in your notes section. That is how we can consciously bring it, but sometimes they come back on their own. Now, if you remember, memory is created in stages. Now, same thing, when we want to retrieve memories, when we want to remember something, it also comes back on the same stages. So long-term memory, because we are trying to bring information from long-term memory. From long-term memory, it will come back to short-term memory. If we continue paying attention, if we do not, we'll again lose it. It will come to short-term memory. And if you still pay attention, it will come to your sensory memory. When it comes to sensory memory, then only we can use that memory. So how do we tell our brain which memory to retrieve? So to tell our brain which memory we want to bring from long-term storage box, what we do is we pay attention to it. How? By focusing on it, thinking about it, or writing it. Or as we talked about yesterday, when you read the question in the Q column, or read the question paper in the, you read the question paper in examination or test, that is how you tell your brain, this memory I want to bring to my sensory memory so I can write down. The moment we stop paying attention, again, the memory is lost. Okay? So, creation of memories and retrieval of memories. Any question? Yes, ma'am. One student has asked how to concentrate. By paying attention. Yeah, okay. Another one is, what is the right time to study uh, for uh, easy memory? Actually, you know, that depends from person to person. Some people, they read late in the night because it is quiet and they learn better. Some people prefer to study in the morning. Some people like to study at home. Some like to, it's a very personal choice. What I would suggest is you pay attention to yourself and see when you learn best. And next you will find is, it. Uh, uh, next one is how to get high scores. High scores, learning, study skills. That's what we are doing. That's also cool. mm -hmm. Anything else? Oh, uh, that's all right. You can you carry on. We'll just wait for the questions. Okay. So. Be positive because positive mindset and motivation that helps you bring memories uh, faster. And what is harmful to memories and bringing them back to mind is the stress, trauma, intoxication, drugs, intoxication like alcohol, the strong negative emotions also. They are very harmful. So avoid this, stay positive and be motivated and decide what is the best time for you to learn. And inshallah, you'll learn very well. You'll get high scores. So we come to forgetting. Now, forgetting is what this German psychologist, Hermann Ebbinghaus, he died in 1909. He documented how loss, how memory is lost over a period of 30 days. And he made put it into a graph and it is called graph of forgetting. Here it shows zero, 
and these are the days and this is how much the person has learned. So let us say when a student walks into the lecture hall, the student has zero information about this topic, but when teacher teaches and for one hour and the student learns 100% of what the teacher was teaching, that is day one. Now what happens is if the student doesn't pay attention to it, by second day, he will lose this much. Memory will be left only 20%. And if the student still doesn't pay attention, by seven, seventh day, it will again fall down by another, uh, say, maybe 10%. And by 30, day 30, hardly anything is left. So if you have attended this lecture, you have not tried to remember what was taught, and there is a test on 31st day, you are not going to pass it. So what can we do? Here, you look this yellow line. This is what we call revision. If you do, you revise, you repeat, you recall, you review, you rehearse, you revisit, you refresh. So many words are used. That means you think about the same uh, information again, like we talked yesterday in our note taking. So ideally, one hour, yesterday we talked about one hour lecture, let us reduce it to one A4 page. Now let us think in terms of time. So first revision, what you learned in one hour, you spend 10 minutes to revise it. Second time when you will revise, although it says day seven, but please make sure if you are going to forget a lot by day seven, you revise on day five. Everyone is different. So you pay attention to how you learn best. Next time, you will take a still shorter time. In five minutes, you can revise. Next revision, you will again take two to four minutes. So it will continue becoming very easy for you to remember all that you have learned in one hour. And then it will the memory will remain in your long-term memory so that when you have exams, you are ready for it. When the tests come, you are ready for it. Now my question is, is there any advantage of forgetting? Is there any advantage of forgetting? Any advantage of forgetting? Sister Burma, nothing coming? There's, uh, no, I think there is some advantage. Think what will happen if we cannot forget anything? If we cannot forget, see, if we cannot forget, then all those memories, bad memories, they'll take so much space in our mind and we'll always feel miserable. So it is really good that we lose so many of memories, especially if these are painful memories, brain tries to forget it. So that is very, very important in, uh, for a person to live in this world. Now combating forgetting means how we can stop forgetting. Once again, I'm telling you this one. This is extremely important that you rehearse, you revisit whatever it is regularly to remember what you need to remember. And ideally, let us say what I told you, one hour lesson, one hour lecture, should you should take notes in such a way that you can revise it in 10 minutes first time. Second revision should take just five minutes and the third should take two to four minutes. But if it was a two hour lecture, let us say, 
it will take four to eight minutes. If this will take 10 minutes, this will take 20 minutes because the lecture was two hours. But keep this in mind, every successive uh, revision should take less time. So we come to the important part that is memory techniques. And there are many me memories, memory techniques. Let us see what are they. Before we get into the willy nilly of memory techniques, we'll talk about memory formula. This formula, we call it RIA formula. And this had been, it is again a strategy or technique which helps you encode and store information in such a way that memory sticks firmly in the mind. So what is this RIA formula? R means repetition, I means impression, and A means association. What we mean by this is repetition means when you repeat the information again and again by reading, by writing, or by speaking. So, by repeating the information again and again, by reading, writing, or speaking, you can stick it to your long-term memory firmly. But this is not as firm as the next two ones. Impression is, uh, it is much easier to recall a person or a thing that has left a deep impression on your mind. We meet so many people, but we do not remember all. People who have left a deep impression on our mind by doing something good to us, we remember them. So we have to similarly, you know, we'll try to uh, make a deep impression. How we can do that? We can convert whatever information we want to remember into a mental picture. And that mental picture should be very vivid and very clear. And we'll try to exaggerate it. Exaggerate means blow it out of proportion, more like a cartoon. Uh, in cartoons you have seen, you know, like somebody's nose is so long or ear is so long, out of proportion, that is called exaggeration. So we create a mental picture, which is very vivid, very clear, and we exaggerate the picture, and we add color to the picture, all in our mind. And lastly, we turn the picture into a video clip. So it moves like we can see it like a film in our mind. Then it will stick to our mind very firmly. And third one is association. What we do is uh, whatever you want to remember, you connect it with something you already know. Yesterday we did the same thing, connecting information with something we know while we were writing. Uh, summary. And if you make that connection emotional, the mental picture will be sticking to your memory still more strongly. And how we can do that? Use all your five senses to make that mental picture and inshallah we'll have time, we'll go through that, how we can do that. So we'll start with simplest techniques, simplest simplest techniques. I'm sure some of you must have learned this. Some of you must have learned this. This we do to remember that everything which comes on our, you know, like here, here, the months which come here, they have 31 days. And those which come in the valleys, they have only 30 days, except February which has 28 or 29 days. And I used to think only in India we learn it, but even my Chinese students, they all learned it. So it looks like it's a very widely known phenomenon that we know our hands, our knuckles, these are called knuckles. So known information is knuckles and new information is number of days in each month. So you connect the two, connect new information with something you know, you remember it. Like my father taught me this thing when I was not even going to school and I still remember it. Now here's a question. It is an example. This skeleton, 
can be used to connect what with what. What is known information in this and what new information we can learn from it. You can type your answer in the live chat box or wherever you want. This is again connecting new information with something we know. But I want you to analyze what is new information in this and what is the information that we know. How can this diagram help us remember something? Mm. Something coming? No, oh, ma'am. Okay, no. I don't want to confuse because today I'm unable to see anything else except my slide. I'm not seeing the chat, nothing. So known information here is the body parts. We know this is my hand. This is my arm. This is my hand. This is my hand. This is my skull. This is my jaw. This is my spine, legs, feet. New information is the names of the bones. You see the names of the bones are written like humerus, that is the upper part of the arm. Radius and ulna, that is the lower part of the arm. And here those phalanges, same femur. And then here we have tibia, fibula. So new information is names of the bones. Known information is the body parts. We already know. So by connecting the two, we can learn it very well, easily. Second method is chunking. So if you have a long number to remember, what you can do is you can break it down into smaller pieces. Let's say not more than two to four digits long. So to memorize, let's say 336-198-6010, this number, we can remember 336 and 1986 and 010. How we can do it? To make the number more memorable. First thing is you can break it into three parts and you learn. But we are trying to make it more memorable. So you look for patterns or associations within each chunk. Means look for something here, look for something here, and look for something here. That will help you remember. And then you find that 336 can be 3 plus 3 is equal to 6. Now you'll remember because all of us remember. 3 plus 3 is equal to 6. So 336, three, you remember the number. To remember 1986, you can think if you have any memorable event that happened that year. Maybe your parents were uh, born, um, maybe your parents were married in 1986, or you visited London in 1986 or something. Think of something that will help you remember that date, 1986. 4010, you can think this one, well balanced. You know, it's so well balanced. Or you can remember this percentage sign, 010. Zero, zero. Which one to choose? You are free to choose whatever you like. It is nobody's business how you make the chunks and how you try to remember it, what you associate it with. These are all your choices. You do what helps you remember best. Any question? Ma'am, uh, she asked about stress. How to reduce stress? How to reduce stress? Okay. Another is... one is about uh, emotional intelligence. Why you are talking about emotional intelligence now? <laughs> we are doing... Excuse me, ma'am. <laughs> we, doing... we are doing memory techniques. So we'll talk. Uh... Well, emotional intelligence is actually a completely different topic. Ma'am, excuse me, ma'am. Yeah? Yeah, sorry for the interruption. Uh -huh. Ma'am, kindly share your screen, ma'am. You are not seeing, I told you, I was not seeing anything. Let me go back from the beginning. Because I'm not seeing anything except my slides. No, again, I'm not seeing. Yeah. 
yeah, I'm not seeing anything. You know? She no, you're, 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 yeah. Okay, can you see now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh, yes. Could you see anything which I described before? Or no? No, no. Why you didn't Sorry, tell me so far? Yeah. We have already spent half an hour. How can they understand anything which I talk? Okay, I'll go through it very, very quickly. If they have not seen anything. No problem, ma'am. You can just carry on. Carry on, sure. Yeah. Carry on I, to the first one, no problem. I don't just want to... Quick, uh, uh, just a uh, quick, quick uh, recall, you can just give it. Okay, so chunking, I told you, like chunking, if you have to remember this big number, you have to break it down into three parts, at least, or four parts and try to remember uh, and look for pattern into each one and you associate it with something that you may remember so that you remember the entire big number. So what happens is within a minute, you can remember 336-198-6010. Am I clear now? Now rhymes, this is very interesting. Rhymes, create a catchy song or rhyme that includes the number you need to remember. For example, to remember when Christo, like it's a history lesson and you want to remember uh, when Christopher Columbus set out to discover America. That was in year 18, 1492. So what you can remember is in 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue. Now you create a rhyme. So in 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue. If you can sing it, rhyme it, you'll remember date 1492. Now this one, I don't know how many of you know about it. This is my hometown Bhopal where uh, I mean, so many people, thousands died in 1984. And so if I want to remember what happened in 19, when did the gas leak in Bhopal? I can say in 1984, Union Carbide killed 20,000 and more. Now, you see, I can also say in 1984, gas leak killed 20,000 and more. What words to use is completely my choice. It's completely my choice. I wanted to remember the name of the company because of which uh, gas leak happened because they, they tried to, you know, not even bother about it. So which words to use in the rhyme? This is completely your choice. Next one is mind maps. Mind maps, those of you know how to make mind maps, you'll realize because mind maps look like this. And because they can be seen, so these are very useful in remembering concepts and processes. So how to succeed at school, the person has made this mind map. The person will do classwork. In classwork, the person will concentrate, listen, take notes, and the person will study, that will re revise, review, recall, motivation, stay positive, visualize success, and homework, learn from your mistakes, do it now, do it well. When you look at it, because now you are trying to remember everything, what you see leaves an impression on your mind. If it's a colorful mind map, it leaves a deeper impression. Now this is, very interesting, mnemonics. The word mnemonic is derived from the Greek goddess of memory, that is mnemosine. In this technique, information is modified into a form that is easier for brain to remember for a long time. So how we can do that? A mnemonic is actually a spatial sentence that makes sense. It should not be nonsense sentence. It is made to remember something. And mnemonics are effective in learning spelling, remembering lists and sequences. Learning spellings, remembering lists and learning sequences. 
Now, if you can add to your mnemonic that a special sentence you make, if you can add some humor, fun, or surprise, you can take ordinary, you can make ordinary information memorable. You can make your own mnemonics, but make sure they are easily pronounceable. If you cannot pronounce it, you cannot remember it. So how can we do that? You take the first letter of each word used, you hope to remember and make it a new sentence. For example, this is a sentence. Mm -hmm. This sentence is made to remember a spelling. Which spelling is that? M-N-E-M-O-N-I-C. So what is the answer? By memorizing the above sentence, like memory needs every method of nurturing its capacity. What is spelling you are trying to remember here? What spelling? Mnemonic. We are trying to learn the spelling of mnemonic only. C M N E M O N I C. So mnemonic memory needs every method of nurturing its capacity. Sister, I want to know if any question is there because I don't want to, uh, like first 20 minutes, there was no screen you said. So I'm just worried whether the students are getting confused. Office, they're not given any questions. Uh, previously, they asked about two questions. One is about stress. Oh, stress. For the stress, actually, you know, like the best thing is, this is why I included when I talked about memory, I said the bad memories are really, when we remember them, we can do two things. We can either forgive the person or we can take revenge. So first thing is learn to forgive. That's very, very important in uh, not getting stressed. And secondly, you know, like even this study skills, we are doing it so that yesterday, actually Dr. Rajab Fatima said that if you have good study skills, you can learn in a shorter time and you will have time for other things in life because only studies, studies, studies is not going to create stress. Exams do create stress. Even if you are well prepared for it, it's not possible to be prepared 100% for all exams all your life. Third point I would suggest is stop blaming yourself if you do not succeed. And fourth point will be be prepared to take some failure in life. It is impossible that all of us will never fail in our lives. I want to do something. It may not be an exam. Maybe I want to uh, make, a, make a, let's say what? I want to make a bag for my daughter. And I don't know how to make. Or I make. She didn't like I should not take it back. Think bad about it. She didn't like, she didn't like, she's a person. So when we start accepting our failures, shortcomings, we can reduce the stress and actually we can perform better because we are at peace with ourselves. Yeah, does it work? Yes, ma'am. Screen. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So we do some practice now. Make a mnemonic to remember the names of human bodies' excretory organs, because you are college students, you know, second year and third year. So, and this is very simple information that the school students should know. Excretory organs of the body are liver, kidney, skin, lungs, and intestine. Do remember all this. Because we don't need to remember them in sequence. You can put uh, intestine first or liver first. So what we can do is, we change liver into Laila. 
starts with L. I is intestine, so we change it into Imran. K, kidneys into Kiran. S, skin into stop. How, what should you put here? This is your choice. So if I remember this sentence, Leila, Imran, Kiran, stop littering. Now it has become a sentence. This sentence has meaning. And by remembering L, I'll remember liver. By remembering I, I'll remember intestines, K, kidneys, S, skin, and L, liver. Mnemonics are very powerful tool to learn. That's why I'm not in a hurry to move forward. If you have a question, please, please ask. Am I clear how you can make a mnemonic? How to overcome mathematical anxiety? How to? Overcome mathematical anxiety. What is mathematical anxiety, sister? Because some of them are uncomfortable with maths due to less visualization. Oh. You know, Actually, you children, I really feel so bad. There must be some part because mathematics is one subject, in fact, all subjects, but more so mathematics. If you have, if you do not have a strong foundation, you'll find it very difficult to proceed to higher level maths. And sometimes in primary school, early secondary school, you are not given those fundamentals correctly. But go back. You know, what I suggest is whenever you feel this thing is a problem, mathematics is a problem, think, we all got a mind which works very well. Think what is causing the confusion. If you can find that problem, what is causing confusion, you can talk to your parents, you can talk to your teachers and find a solution. Most of the time, students get confused. They don't know what the problem is. So they cannot seek help. Look at yourself, try to find what is the problem. And when you can identify the problem, seek help. There is no shame in asking for help. Okay. Okay, ma'am. So now I want you to take notes this thing. This you can do at home. Okay, you are you have a paper and a pen. You want you can take a screenshot, though I'm not very fond of screenshot. Six ways to purify water. How will you make a mnemonic? Settling. Filtration, coagulation, chlorination, aeration, boiling. Make a mnemonic to remember all these six. Or factors that affect water evaporation, for example, temperature, area exposed, wind, humidity. Make a mnemonic to remember that. General properties of matter, like mass, weight, volume, density. How will you remember this? Make a mnemonic. Make a mnemonic just like this. Lela Imran Kiran, stop littering. Now it's just one sentence and I can remember all five uh, excretory organs. Have you noted down? If you have noted down, we can move. Yes, we can move. Okay. So now simple mnemonics. Now, the simple mnemonics are, because mnemonics are of many types, simple mnemonics, is if I want to remember the names of these planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, I will remember this sentence. My very epic mom just served us noodles. Who's happy if your epic mom gave you just noodles? M for Mars, V for Venus, E for Epic, M for, oh, sorry. You can take Mercury. 
either mercury comes here or mercury comes here mars and mercury can be exchanged j for jupiter s for saturn u for uranus and n for neptune this we did yesterday simple mnemonic mrs gren seven characteristics of living things that is movement reproduction sensitivity growth respiration excretion and nutrition do remember what happens in oxidation and reduction reactions in chemistry you can simply remember leo goes j leo l for losing e for electrons that is oxidation leo l e o losing electrons is oxidation j means gaining electrons is reduction or you can remember this one oil ring oxidation is loss of electrons and reduction is gain of electrons which one you will make it is your choice always always think what helps you learn best you want to make a third one go ahead and make lyrical mnemonics these are rhymes rhythm use rhyme and rhythm and repetition and melody to turn your mnemonic into ditties ditties are short songs the children sing and sing them to memorize for example if uh, somebody wants to remember the spelling of difficulty they can do it mrs d mrs i mrs f f i mrs c mrs u mrs l t u y when you can sing it you can remember the spelling so let's try it with this fruit trick mrs f mrs r mrs u i t mrs f mrs l mrs y now fruit fly does not you cannot sing it as smoothly as difficulty but that doesn't matter as long as you can sing it you'll sing it few time you will remember it so now if we try to make a lyrical mnemonic to remember following the spellings this is onomatopoeia i'm sure the students of literature will remember onomatopoeia or do they ka had drawn now these are big big spellings because you are college students so what you can do is i can make a song mrs o mrs n mrs o m mrs t mrs o mrs p o e our dear mrs i a it becomes a song or we can say do they ka had drawn mr d mr o mr d a c mr a mr h mrs e d r Oh, Mrs. On, do Decca had wrong. Now, mnemonics to remember sequences. Here, until now, this is also sequence. You can't change because these are spellings. Now, you want to remember uh, sequences or spellings. You can use this kind of to remember this. Uh, the directions in the uh, compass box where is north where is east where is south where is west we all remember n and south at least i i remember north and south i remember east and west but i don't remember after north should it be w west or east so big elephants no i'm sorry i'm sorry big elephants can always upset a small elephants this is a mnemonic to remember a spelling which spelling is that we we'll talk about this just forget about it we'll talk about this one little later big elephants can always upset a small elephants or you can say big elephants can always understand small elephants this is a mnemonic to remember spelling of because b e c a u s e among the two upset the difference is upset or understand understand is positive so if we remember the positive one you'll remember it long time now we come to the second part which i was telling you 
about this uh, compass. North and south, I remember, I always forget after that, should it be west or east? So here is one. To remember the sequence of directions on a compass, what I need to remember is two ways I can do it. Never eat soggy waffles. N for north, E for east, S for south, W for waffles. North, east, south, west. Or I can remember naughty elephant squirts water. North, N for north, E for elephant, S for squirts, and W for water. So make images which are warm. So we remember it long time. In math, to remember the order of operations, you can remember only this. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sarah. P for parenthesis, E for exponents, M for multiply, D for divide, and A for add, and S for subtract. Or seven steps in the scientific method. P for people. People really hate eating donuts and cold curry. Now, curry, which is cold, and donuts, which are sweet, it's just yuck. But you will remember P for problem, R for research, H for hypothesis, E for experiment or data, and data, and A for analysis. C for conclusion and C for communicating results, cold curry. Layers of atmosphere you want to remember. The strong man's thermometer exploded. So T for troposphere, S for stratosphere, M for mesosphere, T for thermosphere, and E for exosphere. What sentence you want to make, that is completely your choice. And in today's webinar, web, uh, workshop, I want you to remember this, that you have to go home and make it, make your own mnemonic so you can learn. It. You can add color to your mnemonics. For example, we are talking about laugh. Laugh and you get happy. L-A-U-G-H, laugh, you get happy. So remember this, make, us, make an image with it so that you remember it long time, because all of us, we like to remember pleasant images for a long time and make the image colorful, make it funny, outrageous, surprising, even shocking. You will remember it. So for cry, it will be cry, run and yell, C-R-Y, cry, run and yell. Put a photo, an image with it. So following mnemonic is made to remember some word. Will someone tell me what the spelling I'm trying to remember? George eats old gray rats. Oh my God. And paints houses yellow. George eats old gray rats and paints houses yellow. Which spelling I'm trying to remember? Sister Puma, any answer? No, mom, it will take a little time for them to get it to the YouTube. We are yeah, waiting yeah. for some time. Yeah, I'll wait. Because it's pretty simple. One says geography, another one says old gray. See, geography is correct. So you, in a mnemonic, we have made a mnemonic using first letter of the word. We want to remember. G, E, O, G, R, A, P, H, Y. So it becomes geography. To remember the spelling, 
George eats old gray rats and paints houses yellow. You can make something different. Now, acronym. Acronyms are pronounceable words made from the first letter of the word that you wish to remember. In mnemonics, we used complete words, but not in acronyms. For example, to remember these seven conjunctions, for, and, nor, but, or, yet. So remember fanboys. F is for, A, and, N, nor, B, but, O, or, Y, yet, and S, so. So you'll remember, if you remember fanboys, you'll remember all these seven conjunctions. Or main, four main causes of Second World War. What were they? Remember just this word, one word, main. Militarism, alliance system, imperialism, and nationalism. Acronyms are really good for remembering sequences. So this you must be knowing. This is very often teachers teach you in primary school to rem remember the colors of the rainbow. They tell you, remember word bibgyo, V for violet, I for indigo, B for blue, G for green, Y for yellow, O for orange, and R for red. And like, if I'm teaching my students, you know, like um, reactivity of metals with acids, and I am teaching them five um, metals, that is magnesium, zinc, iron, aluminum, and copper, and they need to remember which one is most reactive, which one is less reactive. What I did is I created a word, M, Z, E, C, M for magnesium, Z for zinc, I for iron, A for aluminum, and C for copper. Now they'll remember if in, a, in the test or exam, I ask them, mm, which of these, which of these, Metals is most reactive with acid. If they remember MZAC, they can tell me it is magnesium. If I ask them which one is more reactive with acids, zinc or iron, the, if they remember MZAC, they can tell me it is zinc. That is how useful these acronyms are. So memory techniques, what we have covered so far are connecting with something we know, chunking, Rhymes, mind maps, mnemonics, and acronyms are very useful for students in learning new vocabulary, including technical vocabulary, spellings, definitions, processes, etc. Therefore, I want all of you to use them for learning. Because it is said, give a man a fish, you feed him for a day. Teach a man to fish and you feed him for a lifetime. This Lady, she has a fish and she's cooking. She'll finish cooking. What will she do tomorrow? We don't know. But if you teach somebody fishing, see what has she done? Her son has got a shop. She's selling, selling fish. So what you learn today, it's not the final aim. Learning memory techniques is not the final goal for any student. You have to use these techniques to learn better, enhance your learning. Okay, I think I'll stop here. It's one hour already. Okay, ma'am. But please, because I'm really worried, they must be so confused if they couldn't mm -hmm. see the screen because I, I knew there is something wrong because I couldn't see you either. Any, any question about the stress or whatever? There was only one question about the stress and uh, there was one about uh, emotional intelligence. I don't know why she asked it here. No, but uh, no, since somebody has asked. So mm -hmm. it's important to say emotional question actually nowadays, it was in 90s, very popular, but there are so many 
people have researched about it and they are not paying so much attention to emotional question. So what I would suggest is if for any reason it bothers you, you try to be positive instead of worrying so much about emotional quotient. Be positive, keep yourself inspired. If you think you cannot do something, ask for help. Asking for help, there is no shame in it. If everybody doesn't know everything, we all need help. We all need help. So keep, so your emotions are under control. Problem comes when emotions just burst out and the person doesn't know right from wrong and does something which can be harmful to the person or to the society. So stay positive. Now, uh, one question by me. Yeah. Uh, we talk about the time to study. Mm -hmm. So when we, when we talk about the time to study, uh, there, there should be specific time. This should be what, sister? Just while, uh, there should be a specific time for study. Uh -huh. But uh, some of them, what do they do? They while away all the time in the evening and okay. then they sit late. They sit late, late night in the late night. And then uh, the entire uh, psychological system changes for them. That is so true, sister. That is so true. Uh, so now that causes stress. And then when they get up in the morning, uh, then they come and say they don't remember anything. So now what will be the remedy for them? Remedy is what we know. The person has to decide that I want to improve because it is a problem. Let us be very honest about it. Night is made for sleeping. And I know everyone is so stressed, especially studies, you are not able to sleep on time. That does happen. Most schools start so early in the morning, so you, have, you cannot have complete rest. You have to run to school. But the time that is students while away on Facebook, on WhatsApp, on chatting without reason, that has to be cut down. And that is only possible. Nobody from outside can force you to do it. If parents will force, you will do it secretly. Unless and until you decide you want to change, you can change. And if you want, we can talk about, you know, how you can develop your personal action plan and take it as a goal and try to change yourself. All of us need to change. Everybody, we are not angels. We all have problems. We all have shortcomings. First thing is be aware of the problem and then just don't keep being aware. Turn it into action. Change yourself. And actually, you know, something, some advice, I think, what my father told me was very useful. He said, look, pay attention to your studies because the studies are for a fixed time. Let's say how many years? 17 years, 18 years, whatever it is. But we live long time, 70, 80 years. So if we work well, be disciplined. Discipline is the key word. During those 10, 20 years, all your life you'll be comfortable. But if you while away that time, when you are studying, going to college, you are not doing well at college, you are not doing well at home either, you are unhappy with yourself, people may not say it, but you recognize that you are not what you should be, what you can be. So it's a very dangerous situation. So be aware. Take action, change yourself, be the person you want to be and be proud of yourself. Thank you very much. Ashika, go ahead. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Good evening to one and all. With the, with the grace of Almighty, I hope everyone is staying safe and home. I thank our management for making a wonderful platform for us. And I thank our principal 
who never fails to give a knowledge for her students. And I'm most thankful to the speaker, Acha Bansal, who gave us a wonderful knowledge about memory techniques, which is very useful for us. Thank you so much, ma'am. And I thank our HOD ma'ams who made the students to join in the webinar. And I thank each and every student for participating in this webinar. Stay home, stay safe. Thank you, ma'am. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you so much. Wa Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you so much. Inshallah, we'll meet some other time. Inshallah, because inshallah. you want personal development, we can do with the students. We can do so much, so many inshallah. other things. Inshallah. Take care. Thank you, ma'am. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Ma'am, shall I end? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Thank you. Thank you.